Welcome everyone in the third session of transportation policy and strategic planning. Today we will try to understand a very important project happened in Germany, uh, constructed in Germany. It's called Stuttgart Einen Swansig, Stuttgart 21. In, in short words, we can say uh, that where the project decide the next government uh, in the state. So you can imagine uh, the role of any transportation uh, policy and uh, and strategic planning. So if you ever been a, a part of any decision maker uh, committee or like group, so you should uh, play your each and every card very wisely. So your project can uh, can build the city, the state vision, and it can also destroy it. So in that specific part, we will try to understand different case studies. That one, which is called Stuttgart 21, Stuttgart and Swansea. And then we will try to understand a bit more special planning and regional planning. That part is done. So we will try to understand regional planning part. And then we will try to understand the relation of the same whole if we have the L planning. Okay. So the outcome of the project usually uh, does not directly determine the next government, which is so most of the world are uh, actually running through a uh, democratic process. But again, uh, some project on other hand are typically uh, kind of a give its weightage or leverage uh, from their policies, from their from their uh, developing thoughts and vision so the people can can determine uh, the the level of of that specific government within that specific city or maybe within that specific government or that specific state so however some project actually determine or maybe influenced on the result of elections uh, or maybe in the uh, political process so Usually, the single project outcome did not affect the whole country political system, but if that type of a project, innovative project, is uh, going on in like any city or state or or like country, of course it can change its election. So the today case study Stuttgart and Swansea is is its typical example. Uh, before to go in a detail, we will try to understand so that you should have idea that what is the responsibility of in the level of the transportation planning, okay? So if it's a federal highways or railways or waterways or interstate, each and every one work under the federal government, okay? So no one can cross that limit. But all those regions, uh, mainly like waterways and uh, roadways, usually work within the state if it's, lies within the state highways okay and then if it's a country road then it's related to the specific region or like uh, counties and if it's a community road so it's related to the uh, that specific district or like that specific village or that specific peri-urban area uh, as a principle as a planner you need to understand the special development that there should be a balanced pattern of settlement uh, in nature in infrastructure uh, it is very much important so how we can bring that the hitler war strategy was that how we can decentralize different center so like if it's, this is a center how we can connect that center with other center to not through one way is he was a, a kind of kind of a war strategic person so what he did he connect those two points and through different ways through roadway through railways as he was a uh, kind of a war strategic framework person so he knows the importance if one network is down so you have other options as well okay so this is the concept of decentralization okay so that how we can connect a single center with different networks related to the neighboring centers. And how we can frame settlement, uh, the uh, 
the third point is about the that 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 should be aim for the integrated so there should be framing settlement development by uh, from which they can uh, build or develop the integrated transportation system and which can ensure the natural spaces so that's why i just put that part is the mind the space because space is very much important as we already discussed before the space lead to mobility and which lead to transport okay and then we should have a mechanism where we should focus on the on the weak region so there should be a balance between urban area and regional area so that doesn't mean that we only need to focus on the urban area so we should not uh, kind of a ignore the weak regions or like weak developed regions as well and we should provide accessibility uh, within region to the persons as well as to the goods as well and there should be the modal shift uh, your system should be integrated in a ways that if someone would like to complete his uh, journey from origin to to destination and it should uh, facilitate him in like roadways railways and waterways so when we combine all those three modes together so this is basically the sustainable integrated uh, transportation planning and we should also work for the central business district area where we should provide such type of a uh, development pattern where okay look if someone is living here here if his office is located here if he can provide do all his shopping leisure activity and work school so then he will not leave that specific premises so that maybe will be ma maximum of 100 or like sorry one kilometer square so this is the concept of max land use but if he is living here and his office is here his school kid is here school for shopping he usually come here so it's like 10 kilometer, 5 kilometer, and then 15 kilometer. So he will first drove his sketch to the school, then to the office, and then for the for the uh, for like shopping here and then come back. So every day he is creating around 50 to 60 kilometer of the of the traveling. So why not to build the area which are centrally business district area where he can fulfill all his requirement within that specific region while to to uh, reduce his his desire to travel less. Uh, here we will try to understand the regional planning. Okay. First of all, the regional planning should play its part at the national and the state level, of course, to fulfill the uh, the vision and like mission, and that should be the Contra flow process. So contra flow is a method which is designed to increase the capacity of transportation road toward a certain direction while uh, reversing the opposite direction of the road segments. Okay. In in a simple word, if we build three lanes, so you are planning your vision should be the way so that one, two, three, four. So with your planning, so if the people can use only those three lands and fulfill its requirement and we can use, reuse that specific land in the way of uh, non-motorized transportation, cycle path, pedestrian path, this is the counter flow process. And we should not forget the stakeholder in the planning process. We should, we cannot ignore the, the uh, zoning process and uh, we cannot even uh, forget the participation in the regional impact assessment process as well, where EIA special impact assessment analysis, EIA risk assessment analysis, which should be done at the regional planning stage. Those are the recommended uh, reading materials where you can learn that how we can achieve the sustainable approach to transit planning in the cities. Okay. Uh, today we will try to understand. So this uh, slide was uh, not ignored, but I was uh, hoping that we will cover that part here. 
The first part is in the regional planning assessment that if a project is important at the special level and it's according to the objective vision and action of the state. So how this kind of project can be developed in a line uh, which uh, with the condition given to the relevant regional planning and authorities and so on. So this this procedure is usually identified and determined by the regional authorities. Uh, and those stakeholders and people concerned is actually involved at the relevant municipalities. OK, so the pre studies have been first of all determined where we can see a strategic uh, SEA and then we try to connect it with the EIA stage one and then with the EIA stage two. So if it's fulfill all those three parameters and then when, uh, and then in the last we send it to the planning approval uh, stage. OK. The planning approval process have different purpose and its limitation. So the planning approval is the process where we ex, uh, assess the needs the needs and importance of planning competence of any municipalities. The purpose of planning approval procedure is usually determined through a particular development project with special impact mostly uh, related to infrastructure. The procedure involves different weighting and balancing, uh, both at the level of the developer as well as the private and public uh, partnership as well. So means uh, there should be a kind of a mechanism where the uh, the the planner investor and uh, inhabitants so all those should be at the same same uh, interest and objective <clears throat> And uh, we need that process in the national roads, waterways, railways, tramways, airport, and the waste management process as well. In short, planning process or improval is a comprehensive, concentrative, and, and a very huge formulation process. Okay, it's not very easy to like always uh, do or plan something like that. So planning approval procedure is usually uh, state owned and planning approval uh, include all other decision by public authorities such as consent, which uh, also should consider the regulations, the public law relationship, and also which should not affect the all those like the interest of planner, investor, and inhabitants. Okay. Uh, now we are trying to understand that how the state or the country uniform uh, the the next government by coming up with the different kind of a projects. Stuttgart is location is a is a city located uh, in uh, Germany, uh, almost about two two uh, and a half hour drive from uh, Munich, Bavaria. Uh, that network layout is you can see here. So this was the total project, which is called Stuttgart 21 or Stuttgart Iron Swansea. This was the ensuring to build in a parallel new high speed line from uh, from that part, Weldung, to the uh, uh, finishing. The Ulam is moving from here from Weldung to the Ulam here in like that direction. Ulam is located here. And uh, where we, uh, as you can see here, the, the uh, but initially the project was maintained that no, no uh, trees or it will not affect the uh, environment because the landscape ecology mobility 
uh, all those things matter in like Germany and it will increase the safety of the uh, underground stations and also improve the uh, facility as well. The, this project promises to afford the metropolitan uh, Pulitan region uh, of the Stuttgart significant opportunities for uh, development. So this was uh, the area which was connecting between the Ulump and uh, Weldung. Weldings. And uh, this purpose was because whenever someone entered in uh, in uh, Stuttgart, so its purpose was like usually people uh, like that come in here and then leave from there. So the planner and the decision maker, they actually uh, uh, planned it why people first arrive and then leave. So this is the extra type of a, of a distance which usually they curve, they uh, cover. So they come up with a proposal that why not to skip that part. If someone is moving again, so he should move like that. But if someone wants to come to Stuttgart, so he can enter. So this is the whole total case study area, A, B, and C. Uh, but when we look to that specific project, the issues happen before because that first project was assigned in 2019 with uh, 5 million euro and then uh, with passage of time 5 million and then with passage of time it reached to the uh, 3076 million euro with 145 million of risk insurance in July 28 it it uh, it was 2800 and then August it reached to 3100 and in October when uh, the signing ceremony was uh, about to happen so it reached to almost 5000 million euro and that risk insurance was increased in 2008 with 145 to 438 million euro so in Stuttgart 2000 more than 2,000 people demonstrate against uh, Stuttgart and in Swansea, and that motive was deselect uh, Stuttgart and in Swansea, like not select or like leave that project. What happened? So due to termination clauses, it is possible to stop uh, the uh, pre-stage of that project even after the signing the uh, financing contract and uh, because there was a huge aggression and temper among population the result of the council elections uh, strongly determined the uh, Stuttgart 21 project should be built or like not to be built as you can see here the result of 2004 election and then 2006 uh, election so the election loser was like uh, CDU the 